If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today is the introduction of the last reading challenge that I'm doing for 2019. Feel free once again to participate. I'll link the other ones down below. But this is gonna be my good read reading challenge 2018, 19. Basically, I'm gonna be reading the best books of 2018, the ones that won the award on Goodreads, with a few little switches here and there because I may have read the winner. So this is gonna be an ongoing series throughout the year, so don't forget to subscribe if you miss any of those videos. But today is just the introduction video, kind of telling you which book I will be reading for each category. And then whenever I have read three or four books, I'll do like a group review video. And then at the end of the year, the most exciting part, I will be doing my own like prize winner. So for each category, for example, fiction, I'll let you know all the books that I did read uh, between all the 20 that were finalists and then give you a quick review and then let you know which one, in my opinion, should have been the winner or less controversially, the one I would have voted for, for example. I'm very excited about this one. It's gonna be very challenging because I already have to read big books and I already chose 19 books that I want to read in 2019. And I'm adding uh, technically 16 books. There are, I believe, 20, 21 categories in here. And some of them like cookbooks, I'm not gonna be reading a book. So we're gonna be uh, skipping those, but let's go one by one each category. I will tell you which one was the winner. And then if I have read it, I'll choose another one, usually number two, or if it's a number, you know, seven in the series, for example, I'll read number one, we get it. First category is a best fiction book of 2018. The winner was Still You by Jojo Moyes. This is book three in the Me Before You series. And I'm gonna be completely honest, I watched the movie and I'm really not interested. So I will be reading the second choice, which still had like 41,000 votes, still, still very popular. And it is An American Marriage by Tyra. Jones. This book is about two newlyweds who embody the new South and also the American dream and it explores love, race, uh, and justice, basically looking at the race-based injustice in the prison system. It was also a Oprah book club selection, so I shall be reading this book. Feel free to buddy read it with me. I'm not sure exactly when I will be reading this one nor any of the other ones because I'm planning on using my library for them, so it's more gonna be whenever they're available I will be reading them. But this is gonna be my number one. Number two, in the category of best mystery and thriller. Warning, this is one, th that category that's gonna be a complete shit show. Just, just being completely upfront because I have read a lot of these uh, in 2018 and I had really bad reading year with mystery thrillers. If you want to see, I included uh, like the whole genre in my most disappointing books of 2018 because all of them were like super predictable, repetitive. They all have like wife, woman, uh, girl in the title, it's always following a wife, it's all like uh, domestic thrillers and mysteries, like a wife cheating, husband cheating, drinking, being alcoholic, unreliable, being in a coma, having so many twists that like at one point it just doesn't make sense anymore just to try to shock you. So really, I didn't have a great reading year with that category. And I did read the winner, which is The Outsider by Stephen King, which I have to say, the first half, super, super strong. I thought it was amazing. And then towards the middle, you realize it's more supernatural and it kind of got a little stretch. And I didn't think the second half was as good. It was still a good book though. But since I've already read it, we need to find another one. And like I said, it's going to be a shit show because a lot of these I have read. Uh, and then other ones are like book number four or five in a series. So I decided to do complete switcheroo. I promise the other categories are a lot less messy. <laughs> so for this one, I'm going to be reading The Dry by Jane Harper. And... Technically, this one isn't even on the list, but book two is, and since I already own this book and I've been meaning to read it, I'm doing it. I know, I'm cheating, but it's just one category, I promise. <laughs> so if I remember correctly, this one you're following uh, the main character, and he's uh, a federal police agent, and he goes back to a little village where he's from, and there's been like three members of the same family that have been murdered, and he's going there to just grieve, but at the same time he starts trying to investigate and things are kind of weird. Little Town, I feel like I usually like those type of tropes, so this is gonna be the book I will be reading in this category. Maybe I will read book two and then not technically cheat for this category. We shall see how it goes. So let's pretend this one never happened. Third category is best historical fiction book. I looked at all 20 books and I've read none of them. Historical fiction isn't my main genre, but I feel like some of the books that are in different categories could have been in that one, so I still read some once in a while, but this reading challenge is basically to challenge myself to not read fantasy and sci-fi 24-7, so this 
probably will be good and help me get out of my comfort zone a little bit. So the winner and the one I will be reading is The Great Alone by Kristen Anna. This book is following a family who moves to Alaska in 1974 and the dad uh, just came back from the war so he has PTSD and basically it seems to be an abusive relationship and you're also following the story of their daughter who uh, I believe she's 13, she'll coming of age and then basically a survivalist story in Alaska but also in their own family. The reviews are really positive and there's over 150,000 ratings currently on Goodreads in one year so it seems to be a very popular read and I can't wait to actually read it. Best fantasy! I have read actually a few in that category including the winner which is Circe by Madeline Miller. This is one of those I would have put, probably put in historical fiction. What about you? Do you agree? I feel like kind of would have been. Anyway. So the one that was in second position was The Shape of Water by Guillermo del Toro and Daniel Cross. When you hear the premise though, if you've been following me, you'll know that this is not my usual type of books. But in 1972, you're following a main character who has been mute her whole life. She is working night shift as a janitor in the Baltimore Oakham Aerospace Research Center. And she discovers one night something she should have seen, basically a man living in water and he's been captured by the government and he's being uh, experimented on to try and help war. And it seems like it's something like she's gonna be falling in love with him, which I'm not big on romance, but it's very popular. It was second place, they made it a movie, so I may be surprised and it will help me get out of my comfort zone. But a uh, little tea time. I just want to say that the book only has like 9,000 reviews at uh, ratings on Goodreads, but there's like 42,000 people that voted for it as the winner in this category, and it feels like it's people that I've seen the movie that may have voted for it. It's probably why some people say it's a popularity contest, basically this award, because I mean the average person, stop focusing on my face. I'm removing it. You don't deserve it. Let's be real, the average person doesn't read all 20 books in each category before voting and that's fine. It's just that sometimes I feel like when I've read multiple, I really don't agree and again, people are allowed to not have the same opinion. But I thought it would be fun to actually read a few in each category and then kind of update you at the end of the year on my personal vote. So that's another reason I'm doing this. Obviously some categories I will only have read the one that I'm doing this challenge, but still, could be fun. That was the tea break. Now let's go back to or normal content. I have to say I'm a little surprised that this was number two in the best fantasy because I'm looking at all the other options and I feel like I would be more excited to read some of those which I probably still will be doing and then I'll talk about it at the end of the year but a little shocked here. Next category is best of the best so it's basically celebrating past winners and basically making people vote on their favorite out of all the favorites. The winner was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I've read that one, so we're scratching this one. And then number two is Best Historical Fiction of 2014, which is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. I have still yet to read this in the section of my background, so let me grab it because... I have been meaning to read this book for the longest time, but again, historical fiction is not my main genre. I'll read it like once or two every couple of months, especially during the summer. And this one I've been dreading because it sounds sad. So you're following two different kids, uh, one little girl who lives in France and she is blind or she goes blind throughout the book. And uh, you're also following a little boy who uh, is in Germany and he's gonna become part of Ithers Ute. And obviously World War II, it's gonna be sad, I'm sure. And everyone seems to love the writing, although I've been looking at reviews recently and it seems to be quite divided. People either absolutely love it, best book they've ever read, and then some people just can't get into it. I don't know where I'm gonna personally fit in there. That's basically the goal of me reading it, right? So I'm very excited about it. I've been meaning to do so for the longest time. It is time, but a little nervous. I actually seem to have read quite a few books in that category too. This category is Best Romance of 2018, and I'm already laughing uncomfortably because it's a running gag on this channel that romance and me we don't really agree and I even did uh, a favorite romance book I've ever read because once in a while you know I still get out of my comfort zone and I find things that surprise me and that's the goal of you know doing reading challenges so the winner is The Kiss Quotion by Ellen do you say Wong Wang? Wait until you hear the premise. So the main character is very much into numbers, equations and she's actually on the spectrum and she ends up hiring an escort to practice kissing and flirting and stuff like that, but then I'm assuming they fall in love. I'm really not sure I'm gonna feel about this, but I shall be testing it. Feel free to read it along with me. 
the reviews seem fairly positive, but I mean, usually people read genres that they love, so I don't know. We shall see. Next, we have Best Sci Fi of 2018. A lot of the books on this list are either books I've read or books that I am planning on reading, like ASAP, so not too hard to convince me here. The number one is actually a book that I'm hoping to read this month, so maybe I'll be able to, you know, have one category done already. It is Vengeful by V.E. Schwabs. This is the book two in the villain series, the first book being Vicious. That's way too many V's. <laughs> and, uh, and the premise is actually really interesting. You're following two main characters who become friends or are friends in university, and they kind of figure out a way to give themselves superpower, but instead of becoming superheroes, they become super villains. And this is book two. I've been waiting for it for the longest time, so for sure I'm reading this very soon. It's a very popular book. I love V.E. Schwab's writing, so again, not a hard sell here. <laughs> Next category is Best Horror Book of 2018. The winner is Elevation by Stephen King. I feel like I haven't read many books. I think there's only one more book that I just read, actually, yeah, from this category, because I don't tend to read a lot of recent horror. I do read some, but nothing that is usually, you know, the newest one that just came out. And this one I actually already had uh, got on my Kindle, so I will be reading it on there. But I had no idea what it was about, except that it was fairly short for him. I think it's only like a hundred and something pages instead of like a thousand. So the premise seems a little complicated and the reviews are, again, very much all over the place. You follow a main character who is kind of a grumpy old man and he has uh, two neighbors who are lesbian and they don't really get along. I think their dog is pooping on his land, something like that. And he starts developing this weird disease where he starts losing weight without actually losing weight. Like he can put his clothes on and still weigh the exact same thing and he keeps like lowering and he's starting to obviously freak out and it's supposed to be like people coming together and you know love and respect and stuff and I'm having a hard time mixing horror in that premise so we'll see how that goes. But it seemed like a fairly short read so I will not have any issue go through it but if you have read it please let me know obviously spoiler free in the comment section how you felt about it. Next category is Best Humor Book of 2018, and the winner is The Last Black Unicorn by Tiffany Haddish. And I have to say, growing up speaking only French, I feel like I've missed out on so many English comedians. Like, I know no one every time people are talking about it. But once in a while, I do pick up a uh, humor book, and I love uh, listening to them as audiobooks, because very often they're the ones that are narrating their own books, and it's the case with her. And I'm actually excited about this one, because I didn't know any of the books in this category, but after checking out on uh, my library, basically on Libby, I could listen to a little sample of the audiobook and I realized that I recognized her voice because I just watched a movie she was in, the, the Oath, I think? And she was hilarious and I love the sound of her voice so it's going to be such an easy listen to read. <laughs> the next category is Best Nonfiction Book of 2018 and I'm going to be reading the title because it's super long. I'll Be Gone in the Dark, One Woman's Obsessive Search for the Golden State Killer by Michelle McNamara. And I believe the author died while she was doing her investigation. So there's also a like before after one of them being by Gillian Flynn. So I'm obviously even more excited. I have seen so many people talk about this book. A lot of people have been into true crimes. I feel like recently everyone is about all the po podcasts and all the stuff that's coming out. And I'm not super into it, but I think it's because I'm scared that when I start, I will not stop. So... But the reviews have been incredibly positive and I've heard about it so much that I think it's time for me to just you know, take the jump and get into it. I've only read one more book, although I'm in the middle of a second one in this category, so maybe by the end of the year I'll have a few to be able to choose the winner out of. We shall see if I'm a true crime fine, fine fan or not <laughs> at the end of it. Then we have the best memoir or autobiography, and the winner is Educated by Tara Westlover. Westover. Must be all those romance book getting to me. <laughs> I actually haven't read any other book in this category either, although I do have Becoming by Michelle Obama, on my phone on Audible, so I will be listening to this probably this year, maybe this month if I'm lucky. So I'll be able to have more than one option at the end of the year, but I'm excited about it. I feel like a lot of people have been really into uh, like survivalist, uh, you know, getting out of my weird family to go and get education. And I feel that's the case obviously with this woman who at 17, she uh, set foot for the first time in a classroom. She was part of a family in, is it Ohio? Idaho. And her family is part of like the survivalist movement and she goes on to get a PhD. So it's a very popular book. Again, it won, so can't be that bad. And I shall be reading it this year too. The next category, I already had the winner on my list. Uh, I'm waiting for it at my library to listen to it as an audiobook. And I'm so excited. 
that category is history or biography. The winner is The Good Neighbor, The Life and Work of Fred Rogers, basically Mr. Rogers. And again, it's one of those sad, sad tales that growing up speaking French, I didn't know who Mr. Rogers was until pretty recently, actually. And I think it's very, very sad. I wish I had grown up listening to him because he seems like the purest, most wholesome person ever. And I'm excited for the movie and I'm very excited to uh, read this book too. The only thing that would be better is him even narrating his own book, but obviously not possible, but... The next category is a best science and technology book and I'm actually surprised at the winner. It's The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, A New History of a Lost World by Stefan Broussat. kind of want to make that sound French. It kind of sounds French to me. Why is it a different name on the cover than on the writing? Is it Steve Broussat? Steve Broussat? Or Steven? I'm confused here. I'm gonna go with what's on the cover of the book because, I mean, chances are that his real name is Steve. So it's pretty self-explanatory. It's about dinosaurs. And actually as a kid, I was obsessed with dinosaurs. Like my favorite movie, I've already talked about this, was um, The Land Before Time, I think that's the name in English. Basically, Petit Pied le Dinosaur, which is Little Foot the Dinosaur. And obsessed, I had those plastic dinosaurs. But I feel like I've moved on from this obsession. But I may as well re-explore it since it's the winner and hopefully I will fall in love all over again with them. And I mean, a part of me was a little disappointed because I feel like like half of the books in this category are books that I'm like meaning to read very soon, but I might as well read a dinosaur one, read some of the ones and again vote at the end of the year. But let me know if you also want to uh, join me in this reading and learning more about dinosaurs. I might actually be presently surprised. I wouldn't be actually surprised if I was pleasantly surprised. We're gonna be uh, skipping food and cookbooks and graphic novel and comics because... But I will be attempting something for poetry, which again, not my usual genre. Um, I have obviously not read any of the books in this category and the winner is technically book two in a series, so I will be reading book one. To be completely honest, it's because it's the only book I've heard of, so I will be reading book one and if I like it enough, I'll be reading book two, that way it doesn't actually count as cheating. <laughs> Is it really cheating when I'm creating my own challenge? Probably not. So the book I will be attempting to read is The Princess Saves Herself in this one by Amanda Lovelace. Book two, which is technically the winner, is The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one. So again, obviously, if I like one, I'll read two. If not, I'll just read the first one. So this is my uh, challenge for poetry, which is good because I don't read poetry like ever. I could probably count on one hand number of books that I've read since starting this channel that was considered poetry. I, I probably could just two max that I can think of right now. Debut author is one of the categories that I have read quite a few of the books in there. And then a lot of the other ones are books I'm planning on reading like as soon as possible. So again, it will make for an interesting a vote at the end of the year. But the winner of this category was Children of Blood and Bones by Tomi Adayemi, which I did read was good. I uh, the, Number two was The Woman in the Window, which so we're gonna go with number three, which I haven't read, which is The Tattooist of Auschwitz. And, oh, I'm not ready for more sadness. <laughs> I feel like I'm reading a bunch of books that are kind of sad and kind of like war related, and I'm not ready for this. I don't want to cry a lot when I read books, but uh, I believe the story you're following a man who becomes a tattooist. And Auschwitz basically, uh, you know, putting numbers on people and he falls in love with a woman with a specific number and he like vowed himself to survive just to be able to marry her. And it sounds romantic and incredibly sad and I, I know already I'm gonna cry, but the reviews again, incredibly positive and I'm so not ready for this. But feel free to read it with me, to also cry with me because I believe it's also like number two, I think in like historical fiction, so very popular one and debut author too, good for you. Next category is Young Adult Fiction of 2018. The winner was Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Abertali, which I did read, so let's look at number two and it is Sadie, I think that's how you pronounce it, by Courtney Summers. And I feel that's one of those, I've been like, I haven't read it, but I've been receiving comments in my comment section and like my best or worst books of the year telling me that they loved it or hated it. So it seems to once again be pretty polarized. A Missing Girl on a Journey of Revenge, a serial-like podcast following the clues she's left behind. And an ending you won't be able to stop thinking about. So, so I put my name on the waiting list for my library. I shall be reading this once again this year and I'll let you know how I feel because I'm definitely not someone that's shy about telling you that. But yeah, it's a category I only had read the first one. 
The next category, I think I'm just gonna skip altogether because the winner was technically book, I think, seven in series, which is Kingdom, Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Maas. And I read the first book this year and it was a complete shit show whenever I reviewed it. I'm not unopen at continuing the series, but I'm not gonna commit to reading the whole thing just for this video. Book number two was Children of Ch uh, Blood and Bone, which again, I've read. Then we have The Cruel Prince by Ellie Black, which is the most forgettable book I've ever read in my entire life. Then it's like a third, fifth book, whatever, in a series. Again, in the series I'm not planning on continuing, and another series I'm not planning on continuing, then a book I've read, then another series I'm not planning on continuing it right now at least, and then it goes that way and that way, and I'm like, I don't know. Let me know what you want me to do. I either skip it because I have to go down to like number 10, actually number 11, The Bells, which I'm not sure I want to read it. So all the before that are books I'm either not planning on continuing a series from or that I've read. And let me tell you, I am shocked, like shocked, that uh, Skyward by Brenda Sanderson is not the winner. I think it's because it came out so late during the year and people haven't read it because so I disagree with those votes so hard. And then the rest is middle grade and a children book and then a picture book, which I'm not into. So these are the 16 or 17 if you want me to read the bells. You decide uh, categories slash books I will be reading in 2019. Feel free to follow me on this channel and on Goodreads. It's books with Emily Fox to see me struggle through all my reading challenges. I'm actually super happy to be doing this. I feel like it's a brilliant idea that I need to do every single year. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I hope you will also be joining me. Let me know in the comment section if you're planning on reading any of those so we can buddy read them. Actually, I did create a Goodreads uh, book club, which is Fox Book Clubs. I'll see how to add like maybe a list of these books or just like the general challenge for now. Let me know what you prefer and yeah, subscribe. I'll put it on the screen in the videos that I've done that I recommend you check out and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.